Hello and welcome to One Mustard Seed Soaps. Uh, today we are making a um, soap that I thought I had made the last batch of and um, had so many requests. Um, actually sold more of it than I had in stock. So I had to uh, make another batch of beach soap before, um, well, we're at the end of summer, but um, it'll be my very last one. I thought I was already there. Um, pardon my voice today. I'm having a little bit of a sinus cold something or other brewing, um, but I'm in here doing um, one of my very favorite things, helping me feel better. Um, and I wanted to um, take a little step back today and just show you a little bit. Um, a lot of people ask me how this is made, what's the process, um, and so I thought I would take a step back. This is not from the very beginning. I already have mixed the lye with the water and that had um, silk and um, a little titanium dioxide and a little bit of sugar in the water which helps with lather. Um, helped to make it more bubbly and so I had already mixed those things together and then poured it um, and what happens then is it heats up to about 200 degrees and then I let that cool meanwhile I'm pouring all the oils and the butters and everything in the crock um, and kind of letting those two temperatures meet somewhere in the middle so I was about um, 96 degrees on the um, lye water and around 100 degrees, I think, on the oils when I put them together. Um, I had put a little bit of kaolin clay, white kaolin clay, into the oils, and then I took my stick blender and um, I first blended the lye water to make sure everything was um, all mixed up, and then I mixed up the kale and clay in the oils, then added the lye water, and then mixed all of that together. And that was at um, about 45 minutes ago. So this has been cooking, and you can see it's starting to fold over um, and get kind of a gel-like consistency. In the middle, it still looks hard. Um, depending, it seems like different every time, but I don't know how well you can see, but there's kind of like a ring around where it's getting that jelly appearance. Um, and I can never tell, especially when I have titanium dioxide in, um, which helps it to be a little bit more white. Um, and that's a very safe ingredient. It's in almost every single toothpaste you buy on the shelf. Um, so very safe ingredient. And anyways, I can never really tell if it's going to be hard all the way down to the bottom or if this is just kind of a layer of hard on top and then I'm going to be very gelled on top. So it's been cooking a while and I have my um, thermometer here. I'm just going to take a temperature here and it's about 178 degrees. But once I get into there, most likely... Trying to keep as much moisture in here as I can. Most likely, once we get underneath, it's going to measure a little hotter. It's kind of different every time. But anyway, we're going to give it a stir and see what we have. So, yeah, this um, you can see underneath there, it is ready to be stirred and it is somewhat like um, kind of a mashed potato y consistency right now and it's so hot that once I put that piece that was still kind of hard down in there I mean it just it just becomes just like the rest of the batter and so what happens with this is, is it's in this mashed potato -y kind of consistency and then it turns you can almost hear it a lot like a gel almost like a clear, like a translucent gel. Um, and so I'm gonna let this, just wanna get that down in there. And you can almost hear it. And so this is pretty much soap now. What it has done is it's the crock pot helps to speed up the chemical reaction by cooking it so you don't have to wait six weeks for the chemical reaction and the lye to come out of it, um, to evaporate out of it. You just hurry the process up by cooking it in the crock. 
and um, I like that way. I still have a piece in there that needs to melt. I like this way because I'm impatient. That's one reason. Um, and I like to be able to have the soap ready within about a week. This process is a lot slower. If I was making cold process, I would be able to do it in about an hour, and but then it would have to cure for six weeks. So I'm going to let this cook for probably another five minutes or so. So I'll turn off the video and then I'll get back with you um, as soon as we're there, okay? Okay, welcome back. Um, this has been cooking for an additional, I don't know, probably 10 minutes. <laughs> um, let me just, yeah, it's about 180 on top, but it looks to be pretty, um, yeah, definitely, definitely done. You can hear it. I don't know if you can hear it on the video. It, um, does have kind of a sound, but it can, I don't know if you can see, it's more of like a translucent consistency. It kind of looks like gel almost, but it's definitely done. So I will um, turn the crock off because the residual heat will help me to get the rest of what I need to do done. So from here, and I love this shape crock pot, my brother-in-law, Shout out to my brother-in-law for the uh, yard sale find. And I love it because I can leave this in and not have to keep using utensils um, as I do the rest. So what happens now is I always am telling uh, people that I meet at the craft fairs the difference between hot and cold processed soap and how I cook it and how at the end of the process here, I'm able to take the goodies um, which is cocoa butter, mango butter, and shea butter in this particular recipe. Um, I'm on video. And I'm able to put them in after the soap is cooked. So the chemical reaction has already occurred and all of this oil then stays in the soap, which I think is part of what makes my soap so much better for the skin if I can do it this way. Now, not all soaps um, work out hot process. Sometimes you just have to make them cold process and we can put goodies in there too and also make them luxurious. But this is just my favorite way to do it. Um, you smell that cocoa butter going in and it is just delicious goodness going right in there. So I get that all incorporated, stir that up and I'm gonna end up letting this kind of sit for a little bit in here. Um, this whole thing needs to cool down now. Okay, so let me let that sit for a little bit. Just put the regular lid on it. Still price tag been washed but I guess I should peel that off the top at some point um okay so I'm gonna let this cool down and um but so I'm actually gonna take it out of the crock and ouch, put it down here crocks turned off okay so that crock will keep it um, hot because I need it to be fluid, especially for this type of soap because it's got a couple layers to it. So um, I wanted to tell you a little bit about what I'm about to put in it. So then um, the next thing I will put in it is going to be what's in here, which is, again, really good stuff for the skin. It's coconut milk and yogurt and buttermilk all in there um, and it will go in and buttermilk and coconut milk are really really good moisturizers for the skin so um, that's why I put that the yogurt helps because hot processed soap as you can see it's kind of this batter is kind of like dough so when you're gonna do a swirl or anything yogurt helps it to um, kind of become more fluid so that you can work with it a little better 
And um, let me see what temperature we are here. Yeah, 177, 180-ish. Um, I don't want it to dry out, so I don't want to leave the lid completely off, but I do need it to, to um, cool down a little bit, or otherwise I'm going to have milk um, that cooks, or yogurt that cooks. Um, here are my colors. So I'm using a blue, like a cobalt blue, an aqua, and I don't know what color this is. It's my favorite color, I can tell you that, like a turquoise, it's beautiful. And then um, for the waves on top, I've got just a teeny bit more of titanium dioxide move, um, ready to pour in there so I can get a little white. The bottom layer is going to have, um, and kind of look like sand. So what's in here is, um, and there's almond oil is what is these are all mixed with. And what's in here is just a little bit of a sparkly mica and some pumice sand. So that will give it a little exfoliant. And then um, also Rasul clay um, for that to look like sand. And then I've got some, this also is gonna go in the white. This is just a little bit of white clouds mica. Um, give it a little shimmer. I don't know if you can see in there very well. I still need to put my fragrance in as well. Um, so I will be back as soon as this cools down a little bit. So to add the next step. Okay, so now we're ready for the next step, um, which is going to be to pour in these milks and the yogurt. And um, hope that we've got it cool enough to not cook them. They should be good. If you ever see a little, maybe a white speck or something in there, it might be just a little piece of this that touched extreme heat and cooked a little bit. Definitely won't hurt you. And then after about a few minutes, sometimes up to five minutes with the yogurt in here. This becomes much more fluid and easy. You can almost see it as it's happening. I don't know why the yogurt does that. Of course, this is something I learned along the way, but it does do it. But I'm gonna go ahead right now and get everything fragranced. Fragrances you have to be a little careful with because they can flash off. If it's too hot, like some of this is, of course the crock pots don't cook completely evenly, but it should be okay because the flash point on this fragrance is about 200 degrees and we're well below that. So there you can see how that yogurt made that batter so much easier to work with. And for our next step, that's gonna be very important. So let me put the fragrance in here. And this is a, called Sun and Sand fragrance everybody's been going crazy over since I made the first batch. My mother really, really loves this one. So, and that's again a regular fragrance oil that I get from a supplier, so not an essential oil. So up until this point, the soap is really very natural. Only when you put the fragrance oil in, some people have sensitivities. Me, I can't really use soap that has a fragrance oil, so I'll have to just enjoy smelling it as I'm making it. And usually I'll put a, another bar in the shower that does smell, so the steam will help me to get the smell, but I pretty much just use the bear in our core line when I'm doing this. Okay, so we have all that in there, oh my gosh. And even though we're having a hurricane this weekend, it smells like we're at the beach. All right, so what I need to do now, I have these other little Crocs. This is where it gets a little crazy. So I have these other little Crocs, and they are down here below. You can't see. I'm gonna pull one up at a time. And I wanna keep the temperature of the soap so that I can work with it. 
So I'm going to take a couple of spoonfuls, big spoonfuls of it. Probably more than a couple. I like, I'd say about four. And what I'm gonna do, oh, I still have my tag on that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the clay in here, and I know you can't see, really see, sorry. Let me see if I can move this back a little bit. All right, so I have this in my little crock. And I'm gonna put the clay, because this is gonna be like the bottom. So I'm gonna put the clay layer with the mica. Um, this is almond oil. So again, great for the skin. It's going in after the fact. And just a little sparkle in there. And I'm just gonna stir that in there. Get that mixed. And let that kind of heat up and then I'll stir it again before I pour it. Okay. All right, and then I'm gonna put this back down so it stays warm until I'm ready to work with it because it has to stay warm to stay fluid. Now my next one is going to be for the top, which is going to be white to look like some waves. I'm kind of eyeballing, so I'm hoping I'll leave myself with enough in there. It's really bugging me. remember buying that spoon okay um so now I'm gonna put the white I want to get a little bit more of white in there so I put in titanium dioxide mixed with water and then this is a mica that is kind of shimmery okay. and then we'll mix that see how it's turning it maybe if I turn it that way let's see how it's turning it whiter kind of shimmery all right put that in there okay all right Put that aside with a lid on it to keep that warm. Where's my other lid? Okay. And then we are going to, and I'm trying to keep this simple. So, they turn out differently every time. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna stick this in the white one so that I don't have to wash five million of those and I can just use that again. All right, so now we have the rest of the batter and we're about to really get cracking here. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the white Actually, let me start with the lightest color here, which I love. I don't really know if that's the lightest color, to be honest. Okay, let's try this one. All right, so I'm just going to kind of pour that on the side here. And I'm just doing this all in the pot because I'm trying to keep the batter as hot as I can and keep it able to work with. And it's kind of sort of supposed to look like the ocean. So... Just stir that up on the side here. And so it'll, it's gonna have, you know, swirlies and that's okay. So that's why I'm doing it this way. It doesn't have to be, um, you know, really intensified. It can still have the white going through it or different color blues together because it's supposed to look like the ocean. And then we'll put this next one. 
next to it. Whoops. And try to get I'm gonna save enough batter to get some blue in there. Alright, so now we're gonna swirl that. And again, it can have some weight in it because the waves, the foam of the waves go through. All this blue can be inconsistent in this particular soap. And then I'll put the dark blue over here. My soaps, I have some that I use micas in, a lot that I use more natural. Um, well, these are natural, but by natural, I mean like clays or herbs, spices. Um, I have a lot of soaps that I use that kind of colorant, but for this beach soap, I really wanted there to be some distinction in there. So, we definitely got that. And then what I'm going to do, well, I need that space. I'm going to kind of take a little skewer here, kind of swirl it around. And it'll swirl itself when I pour it. See, I'm not even paying attention to what's going on camera right now because this won't stay this fluid very long. So I'm working kind of fast. And again, since this is the ocean, it's easy to kind of be not perfect, not at all perfect with this soap. You can see it's starting to hard on, harden on the sides a little bit. So I'm going to leave that for a second, but not too long. Um, I've used all of my stuff, just checking. And now I'm gonna get my molds and pour in my first layer for each mold. Okay. And this was the one with the clay. You can see I dirty a lot of dishes. And so this has got the pumice, and it's supposed to look a little bit like sand on the bottom. Ooh, we got a big clump down there. Actually, so. Turn it towards you, sorry. I haven't really gotten used to these type of videos where I really get to showing you the process this in depth but hey everyone's stuck in today rainy hurricane weather not really we didn't get any but okay and now we're just going to scoop this into the bottom here the scratchy pumice in this one. This is, you can hear my husband working on the other side of the room. <laughs> All right. And so this will definitely harden up quickly. And I don't want it really to be even, 
so that it kind of, you know, looks like the bottom of the ocean where it's not even. But I do want to get any air bubbles out and then just kind of mess it up again. I have to tell you, I never have been much of a cook. I really don't like to cook, and soaping is so much like cooking that it shocks me that I love this so much because um, you have to measure and it turns out like batter. And But I don't know, maybe it's the creative side because I definitely love it. All right, I'm just gonna take this so that we kind of clean up the sides as best we can. It's not as easy with hot process because it sticks and it's drying. But we might have some sand on the side there, but we have to move on. All right. So now what I'm going to do is go back to this one, and here's where our big bunch of batter is. Ooh, and that is hot. And we're just going to pour this in, basically. Hopefully, let's see, can you see better this way? I hope so. I'm just kind of pouring this in and it'll do what it does, right? Color-wise, it's just gonna be what it is. Um, getting it in there. Sorry if I just blocked your view, but have to work kind of fast on this. So, Get the rest out the best I can. And kind of plop it on there. Who needs more? You can see how this is like so therapeutic. I don't know. Maybe it is. It is for me. I don't know if it would be for everybody. It does. I hate to say it, but it, it kind of gets a little stressful at this point because it's starting to harden and you don't want to waste any you want to get it all in there um, and you get a lot going on when you have these colors and all of that but it's starting to look like some ocean okay and you can also see why no two loaves and no two bars really look the same especially if you're using different colors all right so pound that down And then my last one is my white hair. And this is starting to get hard. I don't have very much time left with this. And this basically I'm just going to have no more spoons left. <laughs> I'm just going to plop this on here. I want to make sure that I have enough, you know, to cover both and then go back and work with it a little bit once I know I have enough. Because I want the tops to be white so that they look like waves. And it's still very hot. It's very you know, hot on my fingers to put my fingers in it. Yikes. Okay. And then pound that down. Looks like I've got one a little teeny bit full, more full than the other. Not sure how much I can do about that now. Okay. And then what I'm going to want to do 
kind of, you know, just kind of texturize the top a little bit, make it look like waves, make sure, get a little bit of that white down in there too if I can, pushing it down, maybe make a little blue come up top. You gotta, it dries really quickly from this point, so you don't have a lot of options. You just kind of got to roll with, and that is, a, again, that is a downfall of making hot process soap, is that the designs can only be so fancy because the batter in cold process soap is thin. Um, in fact, you, well, it can, you can make it thicker, but it's, if you're gonna swirl and do all kinds of fancy things, you wanna leave it thin and then you can do all kinds of cool, you know, stuff with it. I really want some blue to come up top of this. Um, come on. I'm kind of digging down in there to get some blue in the waves. Make sure. So, and you can see, as long as the soap will let you, you can actually probably play with it too much. Um, but for this one, you know, waves are very haphazard, I guess, well, some of them, I guess maybe not, they form really well, but um, at least for the soap. Okay, and then what I have, is just a little bit of shimmer. Just a, ooh, my fan is blowing it. Just a tiny bit of shimmer to go on top. It's so fine. My fan is blowing it. Actually, I had this sitting over there ready, but my fan has been blown it around so there's the shimmer and then um, we're pretty much done I can um, let this sit overnight and what I'll do here is spray it with just a little bit of 96% alcohol it helps the uh, sparkle to stick and um, then tomorrow um, after I get home from church I will cut this and it's always so fun to cut and see what the inside did for you because it's just different every time um, so I will finish the video tomorrow when I can uh, make the cut so um, thanks for watching see you tomorrow hello and welcome back it is the um, next afternoon after making the soaps and have to apologize again for my voice um babying this cold and um just got out of a hot shower with um some eucalyptus rosemary and peppermint to try to clear my head up so um didn't make it to church this morning it was kind of disappointing um but i didn't want to be um spreading whatever whatever i might um have on to other people so <clears throat> Go ahead and um, gonna go ahead and cut this soap, and um, I'm really excited to see what it looks like in the inside. Um, here is kind of what the outside looks like, and I unmolded this first thing this morning when I got up, um, so it's been sitting for a couple of hours, few hours, um, and it's got some nice sparkle on top. I don't know if you can see that. Um, it's not real bright in here today. We're still having some storms left over from the hurricane. And speaking of uh, earlier in the video, which was yesterday, um, I said, oh, um, we didn't get any or whatever. And it, it, when I played it back, it sounded almost as if I was disappointed. And believe me, I am not disappointed. And my heart goes out to all of those who have been affected. So just wanted to clarify that. Um, so I'm going to just take off a little bit of the edge here. Ooh, that turned out so pretty. Um, and the heels of the soap, um, you know, they're not always as pretty, but then again, when you get a heel, sometimes it means you're getting a little bit of extra, but the inside of this turned out beautiful. So we're going to go ahead and cut this and some nice now I did put this on Facebook um, 
I already had a couple of bars, a few bars actually, that were, I had already sold before I had made it. Um, and then I've pretty much sold out of it. Very pretty. It does kind of look like the ocean, huh? Um, I think I might have five bars of this batch left. I have to go and count. But if you are watching this video and um, in kind of current time, um, comment below and let me know or PM one mustard seed and let me know if you're interested because this is definitely going to be the last batch. I've used up all of my fragrance oil for this fragrance for this season. Um, and it's time. I have some coconut pumpkin and some other fall scents coming down the pike. So it's time to switch it up. Um, everyone will be wanting, you know, to get all cozy with cinnamon and apple and warm scents like that. So I have a few things um, that are coming down the pike. And I don't know if many of you know, um, my local customers know that I also teach preschool. I kind of have a long roundabout story when it comes to that. Um, and I was gone for two years, but this is my first year back after being gone for two years. And it's just, just my love. I just really, really love it. I teach at a Christian preschool. Um, and I think that's probably where I came down with this because we went back this past week. Um, so my soap making, I have to fit around um, working there. So I work there Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. And um, I only work really nine to two, but um, I have three-year-olds and you're pretty tired <laughs> when you get home. So sometimes I'm not motivated to stand out here and, um, and make soap. So then I try to make mega batches, you know, on Mondays and Fridays and um, the weekends around the farmer's markets that we have. So anyways, that's why it's a little bit sporad been sporadic here lately. Um, I should keep cutting while I'm talking, sorry. Anyway, so this is gonna be one of those heel pieces that maybe is not, you know, beautiful over here, but you do get a little bit extra because that's what cut off. So um, let's cut into the other one. See, like I said, they all turn out differently. That heel's pretty nice. I'll just leave that alone. Um, Wow, that really turned out so pretty. And with the pumice down here, there might be a slight exfoliant. It's a very fine pumice sand, but um, it's probably gonna be a slight exfoliant in there in, in just the bottom. Oh, this makes me not want summer to be over when I'm smelling this. Oh my gosh, I love it. I love, love, love it. So if you want a bar, again, do not hesitate. Let me know because these are, um, it's almost sold out as I'm, as I'm cutting this. And this will be, I like to let it sit out, um, let a little bit more water evaporate out of it before I wrap it. So it's going to be another week before I make delivery on these two loaves but you definitely can reserve it. I have almost all of these bars on reserve already. So, oh, turned out beautiful. I love it. So I hope you guys have enjoyed seeing the whole process. I know this is a long video, but I do have a lot of my um, friends, especially who have asked, how in the world did you get, <laughs> um, you know, interested in this? How did you learn about it? Um, and just like anybody else, I watched a lot of YouTube. I did a lot of reading. I did a lot of research. I researched for almost a year before I ever sold a bar. Um, tried it out on us, on my sons, on my family. Got opinions, what worked, what didn't. You know, um, want to try to have a nice lather. Um, but some of the really moisturizing butters take away from the lather. So, lather, so it was all a, a learning process, really. Um, and I'm sure I'll tweak things as I go along. Um, there's some recipes I'm not going to touch um, that I'm really happy with. And um, probably will do more, a little bit more cold process style soaps coming up soon, simply because I am going to be working three days a week and I do need to um, be able to make the batches quicker 
and I'll just have to get in a rhythm with waiting the six weeks so that I'm not sold out of things. Um, I did want to just show you the difference. This is one of my very best sellers, um, Apollo's Cave. And um, this is, again, made hot process, just like this video was explaining how the um, hot process style is. And then the cold process, though, I just wanted to kind of show you the difference. You can kind of see, first of all, this bar shrinks a whole lot more. I haven't really figured out why. I use the same molds and basically the same recipes. It's just that I can't put those goodies in at the end on the cold process. Um, the, all the batter goes in and then you just kind of let it harden and then you wait. Um, so I don't know why these, these shrink as much. Maybe it's just that the batter is thin and condensed when you pour it in and this is more fluffy to begin with. That's probably not a very technical term. Anyway, but this is the difference. So you can kind of see the difference in the swirls. And this is just a sample, but you can see how it's easily, you know, it was easy for me to swirl this all around in that design in there. And it's a very smooth finish, sometimes even shiny um, when you make it cold process. Whereas the hot process is um, just a more rustic kind of a finish to it. And the um, designs, this swirl actually turned out pretty good, I have to say. But the, de the designs some, sometimes come out, stumbling on my words, trying to find a piece here. Like on the sides, um, it's just not, you can tell it just was not as fluid of a batter when it molded. But anyway, it's just a, a different look. It's the same ingredients either way. Um, <clears throat> but I just thought I would share that little tidbit with you. So anyways, I will wrap it up. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions, please uh, make comments. Please subscribe to our channel. I'll try to do more of these and I'll try to do a cold process one coming up shortly. Um, and after I get over this cold, so I don't sound like I'm in a tunnel. And, um, and then, you know, if you have any suggestions, questions, comments, please um, comment below and uh, pass one mustard seed around. I hope you guys have a blessed day and a blessed week. Bye.